John Carroll looks to the future. The head coach of Duquesne is getting over 70% of his offense from first and second year players. And with the conference's second leading scorer in Tom Pipkins, the future is certainly bright. But currently, the young Dukes have lost four in a row. And tonight, they face their toughest challenge against the nation's number one rated team. John Calipari's Minutemen on the nation's second longest win streak in 12 games. They've won an unprecedented three straight Atlantic 10 titles. All-American Lou Rowe, Mike Williams, and Marcus Camby are backing up UMass's credo that they refuse to lose. Atlantic 10 Conference College Basketball. the A-10 Television Network. We welcome you inside the A.J. Palumbo Center, where tonight a near sellout crowd is making a trip to take a look at the nation's number one team. It's the Minutemen against the Dukes. Hi, everybody. We welcome you into the Palumbo Center. I'm Tony Caridi, along with Ed Stefanski. You know, at UMass, they live by a motto. We'll play any time, any place against any team. But Ed Stefanski, so far through five games in the Atlantic 10 Conference, they are learning that teams are not cutting them any slack. They've had a couple of close calls. Well, they got a scare at St. Bonaventure in overtime. Great atmosphere to play basketball, and tonight's one of them. John Cowell is hoping the crowd can get into it, and if they can play hard for 40 minutes, maybe an upset. And Temple almost got him at the Mullen Center on Saturday. One of those players who had a big game against Temple is Derek Kellogg, the point guard, the floor leader for this UMass team. However, he is injured and may not play. How does that affect UMass? Well, it also hurts because Edgar Padilla has the flu tonight. He may not play. Tyrone Weeks is back at Amherst with the flu. But with the guard position there, that sweet shooting guard, Mike Williams, will have to go back there. He won't get his points. He'll also be led by the forward. Dingle will come to the backcourt. The one nice thing, Dingle at 6'6", can see over the traps. Now, style of play, Duquesne likes to full court press. That's John Carroll's philosophy with this undersized team. How does that match up against UMass? Well, he's done a nice job all year long with the trapping defense, but the problem is against UMass, they want to go up and down the floor. So if they have the good trap, they must do it. If the ball gets in the middle and then the lob pass inside, Mr. Camby's going to have a lot of dunks tonight. All right, we invite you to stay tuned. We'll have the starting lineups and the opening tip when we return to the A.J. Palumbo Center. Tonight's Atlantic 10 game is being brought to you by Gillette, the new Gillette Sensor Excel with microfins that set up your beard for the world's best shave. By Just For Men Gel for that hard to color gray in mustaches and beards. By MasterCard is more than a credit card, it's smart money. And by NYT Video Productions, the New York Times company. When I got rid of my gray hair, I wanted a really natural look. So I didn't take any chances. I used the sure thing for a natural look called Just For Men. Simply apply Just For Men, and in five minutes, rinse. It's specially timed to blend away the gray. Bring back the look of your own natural color as it conditions your hair. With five minute Just For Men, this natural look is a sure thing. Five minute Just For Men, the sure thing for a natural look. Gillette introduces the next revolution in shaving closeness. Microfins. And they're only on the new Sensor XL. These microfins precede the blades. As Sensor XL's spring-mounted blades adjust to your face, these soft, flexible fins gently stretch your skin so your beard stands up for the closest, most comfortable shave. Get closer than ever before. Get the new Gillette Sensor XL. I got busy signals for an hour last night trying to call you. Why are you playing hard to get? I called you ten times, Mom, and then I had to walk. When right now, call waiting is so easy to get. I spent an hour trying to reach you. And all I got was busy, busy, busy. Call now and get free connection. You'll pay just $2.58 per month in Massachusetts, and you may never miss another call. You got call waiting. Finally. Nine X. Yeah, they all look innocent enough until they start ganging up on you. 
then you'll be glad you invested in the security of Jeep Grand Cherokee. With an optional V8 and full-time four-wheel drive, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and a driver's airbag. Because when you're outnumbered millions to one, you need all the help you can get. Now get great values on Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. Plus, for a limited time, get a ski rack at no extra charge. See your participating dealer for details. We welcome you back inside the A.J. Palumbo Center as we prepare for the 36th meeting between the Minutemen of UMass and the Duquesne Dukes. Let's take a look at the starting five for Massachusetts. They come in with a 13-1 and one record. Lou Rowe, the standout senior from Atlantic City, All-American last year. Dante Bright up front along with the great sophomore Marcus Camby. Dana Dingle and Mike Williams in the backcourt tonight because John Calipari is without his floor leader, Derek Kellogg. Calipari, a homecoming. He grew up in nearby Moon Township. He has led his club to five consecutive postseason appearances. Three straight in the NCAA. For the Duquesne Dukes, Matt Curley, a freshman who's coming on for John Carroll. Kevin Price making his first start of the season here tonight. Nick Chitaro, Tom Pipkins, and Kenya Hunter. Pipkins is the leading scorer for head coach John Carroll. They come into tonight's game trying to snap a four-game losing streak. They are 5-9 and nine overall, 2-5 and five in the Atlantic 10. Their last win here was against the Temple Owls, the team that nearly knocked off UMass. And that has to give them a lot of confidence playing a good Temple ball club. Temple, though, will take care of the basketball and slow the pace down. That's what Duquesne doesn't like to do. So the one problem will be, how do they trap? They must trap the basketball and create some turnovers early in the contest. We talked to John Carroll earlier on today, and we asked him, will you change much of your style of play because uh, of the perhaps oversized advantage that uh, UMass has? He said, uh, well, you take a look at that shot clock, and we'll see how many seconds are left when we finally fire it up. Do you think that will now, happen? No, I think John was teasing us because this is only one game. Yeah, you're playing the number one ranked team in the nation, and you'd love to upset him, but he has to look at the whole season here, and I don't think you can just change in one game as John Calipari coming in here with a team that's not feeling too good, and I don't know if John's feeling too good right now. <laughs> Calipari's club 13 and 1 matching identically the same start that they had a year ago. They are number one in the nation that only lost coming in game number two against the Kansas Jayhawks. Now the team that's number two Connecticut plays Kansas this coming weekend. If Connecticut would win perhaps UMass would fall down from that number one position but as every coach will tell you, it doesn't matter where you are now. It matters where you are at the end of March. Exactly. How are they going to play at the end of March? This is a good test for the Minutemen, as you see Lou Rowe right there. They're going to put people out of position. Mike Williams, the two guard, the shooting guard, will have to handle the basketball. Now, will he give up scoring points to get other people involved, get Dingle involved, and get Rowe and can be the ball inside? You see Rowe and Dana Dingle. Dingle will move over tonight and play at the shooting guard position. And the starting five that UMass is going with here tonight, with the exception of Williams, the other four players on the floor for UMass in high school all played center. Well, tonight they're going to become forwards and a guard, and the center, of course, is Marcus Camby. Tony, is Dana Dingle allowed to shoot threes tonight if he's back in the guard? I wonder if he asked the coach if I have the license to shoot the basketball. Our officials for tonight's game, Tom Lopes, Jim Howell, and John Bonder. See the series history almost dead even, but UMass has won the last five straight, and official Lopes is hit in the face as the game is underway, and they will play on. This is Dante Bright and Mike Williams with a three. Tom Pipkins clears for Duquesne. This is Kenya Hunter making his 73rd consecutive start for the Dukes, and he has fouled on his way in. Well, UMass in their normal straight man-to-man -man defense against Duquesne, Kenya Hunter just going to take the ball right to the hall and penetrate against Cal Perry's defense. The other thing you have to worry about is foul trouble in the backcourt spot. Mike Williams picks up his first. If they could get Williams in foul trouble with Padilla with the flu symptoms, they got problems in the backcourt through the Minutemen. Kenya Hunter, a junior from Arlington, Virginia. He is fifth all-time at Duquesne in assists. 
comes into tonight's game with 316, and he is fourth in the Atlantic 10 in assists per game, averaging over four per contest. When you've got Tom Pipkins back there to get the ball to, those assists begin to rack up. So Williams handles the point for the Minuteman with Kellogg watching on the bench. And you can see immediately Duquesne tries to trap at every opportunity. And John Calipari wants him to reverse the basketball. One thing is Tarl, their 6'9 center, stayed home, worried about Camby. John Calipari is going to waste no time. He's already summoned Carmelo Travieso off the bench. He'll go in on the next dead ball. This is bright. Camby follows. Well, a good idea by Duquesne. They showed zone, they trapped, then they went into a man-to-man -man defense in the same possession. But what happened, the ball got inside to Camby. They tried to double-team, but when you double-team, you better stop the basketball, and he just goes in and slams over Carroll's defense. Marcus Camby with an emphatic slam dunk left the rim halfway bent down on the springback rim, and so they stopped the play to straighten out the rim. Now, Massachusetts showing some pressure in the backcourt. This is the freshman Curley. Big game for Curley. He is from Dorchester, Massachusetts, going up against an in-state opponent. Tarl called on the travel, and UMass will take it back. Tarl coming off his best game of the season. He scored 10 points at George Washington in Sunday's loss to the Colonials. A lot of times when teams like to trap and press, if you trap them back, you can get some turnovers, and that's what UMass is trying to do this evening. Travieso now into the game. Lou Rowe is going to be called on a travel. The two teams exchange turnovers. John Calipari looking for a foul call there. tie 18 20 to play early on here at the AJ Palumbo Center spreading the floor a little weave trying to get one-on-one -on -one situations nice look for Tarl loses it to Rowe Mike Williams has a tough time getting a handle now can be along the baseline Knocked out of bounds, it will stay with the Minutemen. Well, that last possession by Duquesne, the good penetration by Curley. Tarl's got to catch the basketball and put it in the hole that close to basket. 2-2 as Carroll calls out his defense, but very physical are the Dukes so far, trying to give it everything they got to beat the number one team. Camby again able to get the ball inside and if you let that happen you're going to have a long night that time Tarl will pick up the foul that will be his first personal and what's so difficult about Camby at 611 he's not like a big guy who can't move without the basketball he moves without the ball and he can put it on the floor a quick move baseline Tarl late picks up his first Great man-to-man -man by Duquesne, but they'll try to trap out of it. Down low again, they go to Camby, and Camby again is hit. This time, Kenya Hunter trying to come over and help out will pick up the foul. That will be the second team foul against Duquesne. It's real simple. John Calipari, the head coach of UMass, is trying to dump the ball inside to Lou Rowe or to Camby. Duquesne has to dump down there. The guards must help inside. Turnover, Kevin Price comes up with the steal. Duquesne with a chance to take the lead. There you go, good patience by Kenya Hunter. Try to run that 35 second clock and let down a little bit. Enter by Williams, Kevin Price has it blocked away. Travieso for Williams. inside for Rowe immediately. He's double teamed. Nice movement. Dingle. He'll have two shots coming up and Kenya Hunter will pick up his second. There's the gambling defense as Kenya Hunter picks up his second foul. The point guard for Duquesne needs to stay on the floor. But the gambling defense, UMass recognized the defense, swung the basketball, got it in the middle, and can be showed that he can dish the ball also. Lou Rowe will take a seat. 
Coming in for the Dukes, Davlin Marshall will replace Kenya Hunter. Now, Hunter has picked up the two quick fouls. He fouled out of Sunday's game against George Washington. And that just cannot happen because the Dukes really missed his floor leadership in the final minutes of that game against the Colonials. But the Dukes won an up-tempo. They won a frantic pace of basketball. Now, it's good against some teams, but I don't know about the number one team in the nation because they can run with you. But when Kellogg and Padilla may not play this evening, they're weak at the guard position. Dana Dingle misses a pair. A very slow start for both teams. Tied up at two apiece with three minutes gone by. Marshall now handles the point. Curly for Pipkins. He has been red hot shooting of late. Now Price, great freshman for this Duquesne team. Scores his first two. It's not a delay game, but what it is, it's almost a four to score type of thing where they're spreading the offense out and trying to go one on one at the guard position and see if the forwards can get good shots. And there's an offensive foul. There's the penetration by Pipkins. He stops. They're spreading the floor on, trying to get one on one situations, and then the dump down inside. Kevin Price. Atlantic 10's freshman of the week this past week, earning that honor for the third time this season. Puts Duquesne on top, 4-2. to two. A prolific high school athlete from Duquesne High School here in Pittsburgh. He was named the Pittsburgh Male High School Athlete of the Year last season. A great basketball and football player. UMass, three turnovers to one. Duquesne does that with that trapping defense. They get people to turn the basketball over. Pipkins forces that one up, and the rebound gathered up by Dante Bright. Tony, the key word, force. You can't force the basketball. you got to take your time against UMass. Off the miss by Bright. Curley takes down the rebound. Duquesne on top, 4-2. to two. And for the most part, Ed, the Dukes have showed patience on their offensive sets. And that's what John Carroll, he was teasing before the game. The four to score was made famous by Jimmy Lineham at St. Joe when they upset the Paul. He's hoping for another upset. Tom Pipkin. That'll help in an upset try. A three-pointer for the sophomore. Travieso, he's an excellent shooter from distance. No good, and Paul with another rebound. And now the crowd becomes a factor here at the Palumbo Center. Before the shot, a foul call will go against UMass. A great look from Curley inside to Kevin Price. A timeout at the Palumbo Center. The crowd is into it, and the Dukes have the early lead. Times, people think you like to read about international diplomacy and leading indicators, when in fact, a lot of our readers prefer to read about sports. I always wanted to be a sportscaster, but I just couldn't lose this New York accent. The New York Times. Read what you like. It's up, and it's good. At the Discovery Channel, we go to extraordinary lengths to tell extraordinary stories. So if we see it, you see it. The Discovery Channel. Explore your world. Hi, I'm Derek Kellogg from the University of Massachusetts. There are so many things in life you can do if you're prepared. Whatever you do, stay in school, or you won't be doing much of anything. This message is presented by the Atlantic 10 Conference. I still enjoy going to work in the morning. I basically dictate my fate. Running your own business takes heart. It takes soul. And to help you manage smarter, it takes the corporate card from American Express. It's me, that's it. You'll get detailed monthly statements with records of charges and itemized quarterly reports to make tax time easier. They make my life simple. The accountants love it. To apply, call 1-800-835-AMEX. You'll soon remember why you started your own business in the first place. You obviously have to love what you're doing. Early on, the Dukes on top of Massachusetts by a score of 7-2. to two. Take a look at the Atlantic 10 Conference standings. The Minutemen, the only team remaining that is undefeated in league play. And you see the bunch up there. George Washington, Rutgers, St. Joe's Temple, and West Virginia all bunched up 
and it has been that type of a season so far. The shooting percentages. Duquesne at two of five. UMass has made just one of its first five. Tarl inside. Some inside strength there is Tarl, the tallest player in Duquesne at six foot nine, gets the deuce. A native of Croatia is Tarl as Lou Rowe goes to work. Mike Williams is there. And it will stay with the Minuteman. And normally, the rap on Niksha Taro was that, yeah, he's 6'9", but he likes to play outside. So far tonight, he has been getting down in the block. Well, I would think his coach, Mr. Carroll, said you better get dirty inside and bang because the way UMass plays, you better be prepared to take some bumps. Edgar Padilla has checked into the game for UMass and another turnover. Right now, they miss Derek Kellogg, their point guard, their captain, their leader, handling the basketball. They've been outscored 7-0 in the last minute and 20. Marshall cannot convert. Rowe with the rebound. Marcus Camby ready to come in for UMass. Off of a leg, and Minuteman will have the possession. That will allow Marcus Camby, who started the scoring off for UMass tonight with a big slam dunk, to come back in. He'll replace Dana Dingle. They always have to remember, UMass, when there is pressure, they got the big guy in the middle, they could lob it high to him, he should come down with it if they're in trouble. Immediately they go for Camby. The basket is good and the foul. Good idea, but a poor pass by Travieso. He did not get it high enough, that was almost stolen. When you're throwing it to a 6'11 guy who has inside position, Look how low the pass is. Tarl at 6'9", almost came with a turnover. Camby, throw it high, let the big guy go in the air and get it. Camby averaging 18 points and 8 rebounds over the last 6 games. Converts on the 3-point play. And now the full court pressure off the made basket. A 4-point Duquesne lead. Coming up on the 14-minute mark and the turnover. Trevi Yeso. I didn't know Mr. Travieso could jump that high. 6-2, he soared right up there and knocked it in. Tough spot for Curley, the freshman, and had to bring it up against this pressure defense. You gotta fake the basketball. Tarl comes up to help out. See, with Kenya Hunter, two personal fouls, he's sitting on the Duquesne bench, that hurts. Now you have Marshall at the point guard position. Watched by Travieso, the shot clock at two as Pipkins can't get it to fall. Now an opportunity for the Minutemen to tie it up or take the lead with a three. Rowe, he's been quiet early. He is fouled on his way to the basket. When we talk about matchups, that's a situation right there. Kevin Price, the freshman, Right here in Pittsburgh from Duquesne High School has to cover the All-American candidate, Lou Rowe, 15 feet from the basket. You better get some help for Price. Five team fouls now against Duquesne, two against UMass. Strong drive to the basket, counted for Dana Dingle. He'll tie the game up at nine apiece and a chance for a three-point play to take the lead as Curley picks up the foul. Now we see it on the other side of the basket, baseline against another freshman, Matt Curley. Matt didn't get there quick enough. He has to avoid the foul. Dingle had the inside position. He's up there. Now he's given chance for Dingle to get three points and give UMass a lead. Minutemen take the lead, 10 to nine. Game of runs, UMass is now on an 8-0 run. It's Pipkins and Marshall in the backcourt for Duquesne. Kevin Price, Nick Chitaro, and Matt Curley up front for the Dukes. Pipkins, again, misses down the floor is Padilla, and the lead is too far ahead. Turnover against UMass. Tom Pipkins a little frustrated right now, trying to get points on his own. He's the leading scorer for Duquesne, second in the Atlantic 10, but he's got to let the offense flow to him right now. Travieso did a real nice job defensively, right in his face on the jump shot. Lou Rowe and Travieso will both come out for John Calipari's club. Rowe still looking for his first points of the night. 
Dante Bright and Mike Williams have re-entered. UMass leads it by a point, 12.45 to play opening half. Marshall. Carl is hit from behind. It will go against Dana Dingle. UMass wanted the offensive foul on Marshall as he went right in there. Lou Rowe looked like he had good position, but it went out. John Calipari and his staff not happy with the non-call, but it'll be Duquesne's basketball underneath. Just get it in to Davlin Marshall. Matchup here is Mike Williams watching Duquesne's Tom Pipkins. Williams regarded as the best defensive player for the Minutemen. And of course, Pipkins, the leading offensive performer for the Duquesne Dukes. He is second in the Atlantic 10 in scoring. So far in this game, he has been held to three points in the first eight minutes. Padilla in the lineup with the flu. Let's see how long he can go. He can play defense. The freshman Price makes his move, and he is hammered by Padilla. That was good patience right there as Padilla is up there not feeling too well. He's feeling even worse now as Cal Perry's getting on to on him for his defense right there. There's John talking to him about his lack of the defense. Lubug we're talking about with Padilla had him in the health center at the UMass campus on Friday. He did play against Temple on Saturday but has seen very limited practice time. In fact, he's not practiced yesterday, but did shoot around with the club earlier today. The big guy, Tyrone Weeks, the sophomore from Philadelphia, didn't make the trip. He'll probably lose a few LBSs with the flu. That's Mike James, freshman from Amityville, New York, replacing Davlin Marshall. Kevin Price with a chance to tie the game up at 10. Canby reverses, nice look, Dana Dingle. The only way that would have happened is the six of the Canby can see over the traps and make the cross-court pass. Duquesne beats the Minutemen down the floor, chained to the basket, followed in by Carl. How about Nietzsche and Carl playing for the Dukes? Four points being very aggressive on the boards. Padilla nearly loses it. Now finds Camby behind his head for the basket. I don't know if we could call that a dunk. Almost a dunk. But the good catch goes up and the basket and his head were almost together and reached over and put it in. That beauty by Camby gives the Minutemen the lead back by two. Coming up on 11 minutes to go, opening half. This is James, a freshman, and he has excellent quickness. Being watched by Padilla. Dingle for Padilla with Bright. Bright keeps it alive. Taro finally gathers it in. Duquesne down by two. Curly left alone. Now John Calipari had the opportunity that time to have Padilla right next to him, and he said, slow it down and set it up on offense. He wants to go in the can low, try to push it in there. He's wide open. Camby again is hit by the freshman Kevin Price. That will be number two against Price, and he does look a bit bewildered. How do you stop that? Well, guy? he's got to rotate over quickly. When the trap came, Price took too long to get over it. He's got to get in front of Camby. There's got to be rotation inside. If there's not rotation, Camby's going to get a lot of good looks real close to the basket. Lou Rowe comes back on for UMass. That was team foul number seven against Duquesne. A one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Marcus Camby, the sophomore from Hartford, Connecticut. Canby with eight quick points. Tony shoots at a 59% clip from the field, but look where he's getting his shots. Great inside shot. Marcus Canby makes a pair of foul shots and uh, a very pretty basket. This is one reason why he's shooting 70% from the field in the conference. 
Look, a MasterCard won't make you different or unique, okay? Actually, maybe it will. I mean, millions of people use MasterCard, but yours is meant for you and you alone. So if someone steals it, instead of worrying about people running around pretending to be you, call right away and cancel it. Because, after all, there's only one you. What's more, even if somebody does manage to charge it up to you, you won't pay a cent. And we may even be able to get you a new card the next day. But just for you. And how's that for a useful card? MasterCard, it's more than a credit card, it's smart money. Your advertising is your voice in the marketplace. Advertise in the genuine Bell Atlantic Daily Pages, and your voice reaches more customers. A bigger ad gives you a bigger voice. A, bigger voice. a color ad gives your voice more impact. But if you don't have an ad, it's like having no voice at all. Nine out of ten use it, and they're all ears. The genuine Bell Atlantic Daily Pages. Bell Atlantic, the heart of communication. Wait a minute, I have a few things I have to take care of. All right, we stop at every one of these machines. We're going to be late for the game. Only the Bay Bank card with Express Link lets you move money instantly from your personal account to your expense account. Pay your credit card bill. You can even send money to your son at college and still make it to the game on time. And while you're here, why don't you get me let's some? Go, let's go, let's go. Oh, thanks. I hope we don't run into another machine. The Bay Bank card with new Express Link. Call 1-800-BAY-FAST today. Hey, I know you. You're Bob uh, Lobel. Hey, how you doing? And, and you're that guy from Bay Bank. Can I borrow your card? <laughs> Early on, the Massachusetts Minutemen on top of Duquesne, 16 to 12. We welcome you back to the Palumbo Center. Tony Caridi along with Ed Stefanski. Enos Norville has come back on the floor for the University of Massachusetts. Duquesne, Ed, getting itself into a little bit of a foul problem here early on. They have already committed seven team fouls, 10-24 still to play in the half. And they got their point guard and their ball hander, Kane Nick Hunter, uh, Hunter on there, and there's a bad pass. The pass was deflected on the baseball attempt down the floor. Rowe slams it in and leaves the basket bent. That's what John Carroll is worried about, is possession of the basketball. You can run here, you got to fake the ball, and you have to have hard cuts coming back to the basketball. That's the second time tonight that the rim has been left bent down, and that might uh, be a problem all night. Well, the problem now is... Hunter on the bench, no real point guard out there to handle the basketball. Now you got James with the ball, and you're trying to ask a freshman Curley to handle the ball against real strong pressure. Curley to the basket. No. An offensive foul will be called, but they will count the basket. Well, that may give the young man some confidence as he makes a good move to the basket, but he's still leaning. He's working with his left hand. He shields off. Norville with the right, but he can't stop. He keeps going, throws the ball up and gets a two-pointer, but they'll go back down the line and shoot. Official John Bonder signaling that the ball had been released prior to the contact, and so we'll walk to the other end, and Dante Bright will have a chance at a one-and-one. One. Dante Bright likes to be number one. Number one at Dunbar High School his senior year, 29-0 and they're number one in the nation. Not many men in the country can say they played for two number one teams. Wright makes a pair of free throws, and that UMass lead its biggest of the night now at six. The ball will go to UMass as Curley again struggled getting the ball inbounds. I think John Carroll is going to have to change up the offense of getting the ball inbounds they're not moving well enough. He's going to have to set some screens to get people off to get the ball. Again, Hunter is a problem in foul trouble on the bench. Terrell Bridges now in for Duquesne. Down low, he's a 6'6 sophomore out of Dayton, Ohio. Add some size to the Duquesne front line. Mike Williams and Carmelo Travieso in the backcourt for the Minutemen. It's Bright, Rowe, and Norville up front, and this is Rowe, strong to the basket for his second field goal. I'd say that was pretty quick. Two feet, jump to a stop. Two points, easy two for Lou Rowe as he got by the defender. Curley loses it again to Dante Bright. The basket and a foul. Beautiful play on both ends by Dante Bright. He strips, stole the ball away, he scores the basket and it draws the foul. There's the trap right there, picks it up. Curley, the good hands by Bright, takes it all the way down. He's going to take it by himself. 
There's your foul. Problem is, Hunters may have to come back into the lineup because they can't waste him on the bench, and he is back. And I think that's a good move by John Carroll. You're down 10 now. You can't let the game get away from you. Free throw no good, and Pipkins takes it down for the Dukes. Duquesne led by seven points early on, but now UMass on top, 24 to 14. Tony, UMass on another run, 12 to two. You know, Hunter not only adds stability as far as dealing the ball out there, but he also provides points. He's averaging 12 per game. Kipkins has his shot stripped away, and this is Lou Rowe in the front court. Lou Rowe from Carmelo Travieso, and after a, a rather inauspicious start, Lou Rowe has scored six quick points, and the lead has grown to 12 for the Minutemen. That is real nice basketball by UMass. They block a shot on this end, which they lead the Atlantic 10 in. Shots blocked. They then get the transition basketball under control. Travieso sees Lou Rowe in the middle. Lou Rowe with the nice catch and the easy bucket. I mean, good basketball up and down the floor. We saw Dante Bright come out of the game. He committed the last foul, and now a five-second violation against Duquesne. UMass will take it back, and John Carroll has got to do something with that inbound they play. They are overplaying UMass. They're making you throw over the top. He's going to have to take a couple guys way down floor and then just throw over the top with a screen, and they're going to have to throw it. In from behind, Terrell Bridges making contact with Lou Rowe. The way UMass is playing defense, they will not allow you to cut to the basketball because they'll take that pass away. So if they stop, throw the pass over the top. There's another UMass guy who looks like he's not feeling too good, and that's Dana Dingle. Dana's got a towel on his belly, and Padilla right next to him has a towel in front of his mouth. Well, the, the blue bug is flying on the UMass team. It's flying all through the country, and uh, this may be the only thing that can knock the UMass team down. Not a pretty scene right now over on the, on the uh, UMass bench. They brought the mop out. This is Hunter, and this is what he gives this Duquesne team, the ability to bring that ball into the front court. Bridges with the left hand. And need some inside scoring. Tarl got four points for him, now they get two for Bridges. Now Camby lets it fly. 11 points here in the opening half for Marcus Camby, and that lead goes back to 13. Marcus averaged 15 points a game. He can't get a lot of points with all the weapons you match. You're not going to get that many minutes, plus that many shots at the basket. with another turnover. Coming into the game, it was the Duquesne full-court pressure that we had talked about, but it's been the great defensive intensity of the number one rated Minutemen that's keyed them to the lead. Hold it. This isn't you, it's an older guy. Oh, that was before I got rid of my gray hair with Just For Men hair color. Come on, that's too natural to be hair coloring. Just For Men. Apply and in five minutes rinse. Gray is blended away for a totally natural look. Think it'll work for me? In five minutes. Just For Men looks too natural to be hair coloring. And now try Just For Men color gel for the hard to color hair of mustaches and beards. Brush in, rinse out. Just five minutes. The Atlantic 10 Conference committed to enhancing the high ideals of scholarship and sportsmanship for over 2,000 student athletes. What's the price of poor salesmanship? At Tweeter, we think it can be pretty costly. Let's say you're in the market for a new TV. Sure, Tweeter's got a terrific selection. Like this Panasonic 27-inch TV with stereo sound and universal remote control. Or this RCA 31-inch set, also with stereo sound and universal remote. But the difference is that at Tweeter, you'll talk with low-pressure salespeople who really listen to you. And they won't try to oversell you on a model with features you'll never use. So buy your next TV set at Tweeter, or pay the price. 
the 11 points for Marcus Camby and UMass leads by 13 29 to 16. If you fly often, make U.S. Air your new business partner. We make corporate maneuvers with ease with daily nonstop service to the West Coast, including Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Denver. To the West Coast, U.S. Air begins with you. Tony Caridi with Ed Stefanski from the A.J. Palumbo Center on the Duquesne campus. The number one rated Minutemen of UMass looking for their 13th consecutive victory. They have taken advantage of 10 Duquesne turnovers, lead it by 13. The lob for Camby, and he is hammered along the baseline. Nope, they're going to call a violation over the end line. He stepped, and UMass will give it. Well, it's nice when you have a chance just to throw high to Camby like that. There's a good timeout by John Carroll. He comes up with a different set offensively to get the ball inbounds. Tom Pipkin's leading scorer for the Dukes has been held to just three points. Kenya Hunter against Mike Williams. And Camby takes down the rebound. He's been averaging eight per game. And the big guy brings it up the floor for Travieso. And Camby that time goes over the back of Kenya Hunter and commits his first personal. What I love about Camby, besides all the points he scores, he blocks shots, rebounds the ball, but he plays with such enthusiasm out there. He almost plays like a guard. He wants to be in it. And I'm sure if any other guards get sick or can't play, that Mr. Camby would say, I'll play for you back there and take some threes. It's about the only thing that he hasn't hit this season is a three-point shot. I don't believe he's tried one. Nope. Duquesne down by 13. Now inside of seven minutes to go here in the first half. UMass beating Duquesne in the front court. 25 points for UMass, only 11 for Duquesne. Hunter, high arcing shot not there, and Mike Williams takes it down. This is Rowe. Bridges out to Tom Pipkin. That time, the intimidation of Camby forced Pipkins to dish it off in the basket for Tarl. Well, Camby tried to draw the offensive foul, and when he went down, he was out of a rebounding situation. He couldn't block out Tarl. Tarl gets a six point. Lou Rowe inside. He'll have two shots coming up. Tarl, who has scored six points so far in the game, picks up his second personal. And foul trouble is mounting for the Duquesne Dukes. Tarl, the center, two. Pipkins and Hunter, the guards, two each. And Kevin Price, the forward, with two. Dante Bright has been shuffling back and forth throughout the game, and that is uh, the standard substitution pattern for UMass. John Calipari will use up to 10 players as Lou Rowe scores his eighth point. One. Lou Rowe, third in the Atlantic 10 on field goal percentage at 52, and his teammate Camby is second in the league in field goal percentage. Nine. Lou Rowe makes a pair of foul shots, and Dana Dingle will come on in his place. Nine. 31-18, Minutemen on top. Got to shoot someone in the middle. Bridges taken down by Canby, gathered up by Dingle, and he is fouled by Kenya Hunter. That will be his third. Great hustle by Nunez to keep the ball alive. The loose ball on the floor, and 44, Rigoberto Nunez all over the floor. It'll be UMass's ball, and John Carroll has to make decision on Kenya Hunter. There's the ball on the floor. Nunez is just diving. He gives up his whole body to get it. There's a Duquesne guy standing right there. Tom Pipkin's got to get on the ground on that one. Tough foul for Hunter trying to reach up and take the ball away. He will go to the bench as Davlin Marshall has come on. Leads the team in assists, averaging 12 points per game. Kenya Hunter. Who leads the Duke's history in assists? How about that Clayton Adams? Not a Roman Catholic, wasn't he? Roman Catholic, Philadelphia. Norm Nixon is second, the great Norm Nixon. They could use Norm Nixon. 
Jackson right now against this tough man-to-man -to -man defense. Pipkins against Nunez. Forced that one up there, and Nunez takes down the rebound. Five and a half minutes to play. Edgar Padilla has come back on for UMass. Now Camby in the paint against Bridges. As it's stripped away by Pipkins. Retaken by Williams. 11 turnover, first half turnovers by Duquesne. They average 15. They've been taking good care of the basketball recently, but they haven't seen this kind of man-to-man -man pressure. Again, able to get it inside to Marcus Camby and the soft touch for his 13th points. 34-18, John Carroll wants to stop it. Four minutes and 54 seconds to play in this first half. Duquesne has taken a timeout as UMass has its biggest lead of the night. At the Discovery Channel, we go to extraordinary lengths to tell extraordinary stories. So if we see it, you see it. The Discovery Channel. Explore your world. I'm Lou Rowe from the University of Massachusetts. Don't let yourself get dragged down by drugs. Drugs are a true waste. They waste of your talents, your health, and your life. Don't waste yourself on drugs. This message is presented by the Atlantic 10 Conference. Watch this. They're quirky. Oh, my hemorrhoids are killing me. <laughs> they're perky. Oh, silly little freak. And they're jerky. Sizzle? Yeah, that's right, Sizzle. Jen. Hey! The Jerky Boys, the movie of Rindar, starts February 3rd. I got busy signals for an hour last night trying to call you. Why are you playing hard to get? I called you ten times, Mom, and then I had to walk. When right now, call waiting is so easy to get. I spent an hour trying to reach you. And all I got was busy, busy, busy. Call now and get free connection. You'll pay just two fifty eight per month in Massachusetts, and you may never miss another call. You got call waiting. Finally. Nine X. For all the inside information on the Boston Celtics, watch Celtics Magazine. Join Mike Gorman and Willie May as they bring you in-depth features, one-on-one -on -one interviews, action-packed highlights, and much, much more. That's Celtics Magazine, every Thursday at 7, only on Sports Channel. When you're playing an All-American candidate like Marcus Camby at 6'11", you need some help. Taro up front. But there's Bridges leaving him wide open. You can't leave Camby open like that. It's too easy to catch the basketball. And then the feathery touch. He's just a sophomore, but he is a leading candidate for Player of the Year honors in the Atlantic 10. I would say right now he has it over that Mr. Rowe, his teammate. The front court scoring, you see there, a 16-point differential. Plenty of games left. Pipkins with the basketball is only shooting one for seven in the first half. Talk about that player of the year. UMass has been dominating over the last several years in that category. They've had Jimmy McCoy, Tony Barbary, Harper Williams, all brought in by John Calipari and his staff. Out front, another steal for Mike Williams. He leads the team in thefts and is able to convert. First two of the night for the senior from Hartford. Oh, boy. Dante Bright, the basket won't go, but he'll have two shots. That's just trying to get the ball in before the five-second count, just throwing it in. Again, I think if you take some players out, just have two players on the Duquesne trying to get the ball, one throwing it in, set a screen, you're going to have to throw and lob it over the top. It's a tough pass, and you don't want to have to make that, but you're going to have to lob it with the guy running under it. Dante Bright makes the first of two. As you see, Kevin Price re-enter. Mike James will go to the bench. Also coming in, Matt Curley. Dante Bright, who has come off the bench in the last four games and seems to be working just as well as being a starter. He has scored six points here in the opening half. And UMass now has extended that lead out to 20 points. Wouldn't be a bad idea when the ball goes in the basket to get it out real fast to enter the ball instead of waiting for the defense to set up. Tom Pipkin scores it. 
Camby quickly down the floor, sends it in. Yes, 6-11, and there's an ooh and ah out of the packed Palumbo Center as he caught the basketball and looked down at the hole when he dropped it in. That's 15 points for Camby and two rims left bench. The crowd came for a Duquesne victory, but they're enjoying the Minutemen playing real nice defense, and the offensive end can be putting on a show. Price steps in over Camby. And there's Kevin Price, the freshman, has a bright future here at Duquesne. Atlantic 10 rookie of the week three times this year. Mike Williams scores. That's a couple of baskets for Williams now with four points. As we said early on, this is a very young Duquesne team. Over 70% of its offense this season has come from freshman and sophomore players. A foul call will go against the Minutemen. That will be team foul number seven against UMass. And a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for the Dukes. Coming up this Saturday, we invite you to join us as John Shaney and his Temple Owls visit Al Skinner and the University of Rhode Island Rams. Tip-off set for noon. Check your local listings. We'll have the action right here on the A-10 television network. And belated happy birthday wishes to Temple's John Shaney turning 63 over the weekend. Do you think John wanted that out? Ah! 63 young, that John Shaney. You'd never know it. I say what? He hasn't lost his competitive spirit, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Gavlin Marshall, who has seen considerable playing time here in the first half, makes a pair of foul shots. Nunez finds Dana Dingle. Well, gambling defense and a wide open Dingle. Good luck. That lead back to 20 and now inside of three minutes to play. 44-24 UMass. Travieso takes the miss down and again the Minutemen able to beat the Dukes down the floor as Rigoberto Nunez scores his first basket. Floor balance, Duquesne trying to bang the boards. Pipkin's got to realize he's the point guard there and get back on defense. Another steal, Travieso. Jump ball and the possession arrow will go to Duquesne. John Calipari is using his team's defense here to build this lead. A suffocating man-to-man -man defense denying every pass as John Carroll looks on. But if you don't have the weapons to go against the number one ranked team, you got some problems. Teams are averaging just 69 points per game against UMass. That is fourth best in the Atlantic 10. Temple, as you might think, leads the league again in scoring defense, giving up just 58 points per game. Bridges tried to follow that in off the miss from Marshall, and this is Mike Williams. Dingle throws out to Mike Williams. And Rowe will be called on a push of Terrell Bridges. UMass just kills you on the offensive glass. Offensive rebounds, they average 15 per game. They've had as high as 25 this year against the Rhode Island Rams. I mean, they just bang the boards, and you get a lot of second shot opportunities. And Lou Rowe is the leader when it comes to dominating the glass along with his partner there, Marcus Camby. Camby averages seven rebounds per game. Lou Rowe averages seven and a half rebounds per game. And over the last four games, UMass has really been hitting the offensive glass, averaging 19 offensive rebounds, 44 per game total. And they shoot it at a 48% clip, so there's not that many offensive rebounds going up, and they're getting them. Ball in play on the front end with one and one, and another rebound there for Marcus Campy. The UMass lead is at 22 with now 90 seconds to play in the half. Campy 
Bambi in a crowd finds Dingle. And Dana Dingle awaiting that feed that time went right to work and the foul call will go against Niksha Tarl. That's his third personal and immediately he'll have to go out of the game as Kevin Price comes back on the floor. Tarl has a tough trying to cover Camby. Camby showing his, his mobility again catches the ball inside takes a dribble away to get the assist or the possible assist he's so mobile inside it's tough to cover him Dana Dingle one of the unsung what? heroes on this UMass team he is playing the third most minutes on the squad this season averaging 25 minutes per game tenacious rebounder he's third on the team in rebounds and here in this opening half he has scored nine points Curley loses it. And a tie-up is called, and the possession will go to UMass. Well, it's a tough learning experience for Matt Curley, but he has to take something away from this game, that he has to put his body between he and the basketball, handle the ball, and when he feels the pressure to pick it up strong and get those elbows out. Don't let UMass suffocate you and get up tight. If they're going to get up, they've got to feel an elbow in their chest. Can be again. 17 points for Marcus Camby, who's on his way to a career performance. Talked about in the open about dunks. Well, that's what's happening. They're finding Camby because they're gambling Duquesne and trying to trap. Camby's open inside. The shot clock is at 20, so there's a 13-second difference. Time remaining in the half. There in the bottom corner of your screen. Christ inside. The good pass, the good look, and the offhand, the left hand by Price. Seven points for the freshman Kevin Price. Camby strokes it in. A magnificent opening half for sophomore center Marcus Camby. John Calipari's Minuteman head into the locker room leading by 26 points. It's 52-26. UMass, the number one team in the nation, in control. A winning combination. Wait till we get our hands on you. I can't wait, can't wait. Just wait till we get our hands on you. Hey. Oh, man. Look what you did. Uh, what I did? Uh, just who do you think you are, man? Who do you think I think I am? Easy, fellas. What would he do? All the yellow pages? Just any yellow pages? Genuine yellow pages. Nine out of ten uses. Well, thank, thank you. you. Well, thank, thank you very much. much. The genuine Bell Atlantic yellow pages. Yeah, they all look innocent enough. Until they start ganging up on you. Then you'll be glad you invested in the security of Jeep Grand Cherokee. With an optional V8 and full-time four-wheel drive, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and a driver's airbag. Because when you're outnumbered millions to one, you need all the help you can get. Now get great values on Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. Plus, for a limited time, get a ski rack at no extra charge. See your participating dealer for details. I still enjoy going to work in the morning. I basically dictate my fate. Running your own business takes heart. It takes soul. And to help you manage smarter, it takes the corporate card from American Express. It's me, that's it. Fine. You'll get detailed monthly statements with records of charges and itemized quarterly reports to make tax time easier. They make my life simple. The accountants want it. To apply, call 1-800-835-AMEX. You'll soon remember why you started your own business in the first place. You obviously have to love what you're doing. Well, I kind of need money for this concert coming up. Okay, Darren. The money will be there before you are. Hey, thanks, Dad. I owe you one. 
Only the Bay Bank card with ExpressLink lets you link all your accounts to one card and give them custom names. Hey, guys, I can go to the concert tonight. So now you can transfer money from your household account to your son's account at college in no time at all. More money. The Bay Bank card with ExpressLink. Yeah! Who said my dad isn't as fast as he used to be? Halftime at the A.J. Palumbo Center. The Minutemen of UMass dominating the Duquesne Dukes by a score of 52 to 26. We welcome you back, Tony Caridi, along with Ed Stefanski. At the onset of the broadcast, we talked about turnovers, how they would play into the game, and that has been the story so far. Exactly. Ed. We thought Duquesne would trap. How would Mike Williams handle it? Forget that. How did Duquesne handle the pressure by UMass? Not well. 14 turnovers in the first half because they were denying him. Look at this. Number five, Tom Pipkins is on, off the basketball. Curly trying to bring it up one-on-one. -on -one. You'll see the trap, but you got a flash middle. You just can't stand. Pipkins' man leaves him. Curly's in trouble. Pipkins has got to help out. It's not always the guy handling its basketball. It's the guy cutting to the ball also. UMass came out without their point guard tonight, Derek Kellogg, and it took them a couple of minutes. They were a little bit out of sync, but it didn't take them long. Once we reached about the midpoint of the first half, they just began to suffocate and control this game. You saw the turnovers, 14 for the Duquesne Dukes in a marvelous first half for Marcus well, Camby. Why it didn't happen? Because of the man Camby. And Cal Perry said, get it inside, post them up, post them up, and that's what they did. All right, we invite you to stay tuned. Halftime and the Minutemen of UMass on top of Duquesne by a score of 52 to 26. In a world of conflict, we bring peace through understanding. In a world of economic distress, we bring prosperity through learning. In a world of ignorance, we bring knowledge through advanced technology and brilliant teachers. In a world of despair, we bring hope to thousands. In this complex world, the solution is education for the mind, the heart, and the soul. Duquesne University. It's tough being a fan when your team isn't the home team, especially when I try to find coverage of my favorite team in the local paper. I'm lucky if I can find last week's score. But if you're like me, you'll be happy to know there's one publication that'll make you feel right at home. The Sporting News. You'll love the Sporting News, no matter what team you love, even if it is the home team. Call this number now and get four issues of the Sporting News free. You'll get opinions and analysis, team-by-team -team reports, and coverage of all the college conferences, plus baseball, basketball, and hockey all year long. Call now and you'll get four free issues of the Sporting News. If you like them, you'll get 24 more issues at this great TV price. If not, just mark the bill, cancel, and owe nothing. The four issues are yours to keep. So call now for the Sporting News, the publication that treats every team like the home team. Call now and you'll get four great issues of the Sporting News free. Call 1-800-203-2500. I got busy signals for an hour last night trying to call you. Why are you playing hard to get? I called you ten times, Mom, and then I had to walk. When right now, call waiting is so easy to get. I spent an hour trying to reach you. And all I got was busy, busy, busy. Call now and get free connection. You'll pay just two fifty eight per month in Massachusetts, and you may never miss another call. You got call waiting. Finally. Nine <laughs> X. What's the price of poor salesmanship? At Tweeter, we think it can be pretty costly. Let's say you're in the market for a new TV. Sure, Tweeter's got a terrific selection. Like this Panasonic 27-inch TV with stereo sound and universal remote control. Or this RCA 31-inch set, also with stereo sound and universal remote. But the difference is that at Tweeter, you'll talk with low-pressure salespeople who really listen to you. And they won't try to oversell you on a model with features you'll never use. So buy your next TV set at Tweeter, or pay the price. Welcome back to the A.J. Palumbo Center Halftime. Mass on top of Duquesne, 52 to 26. Let's go courtside now. Ed Stefanski standing by with a special guest. Ed? Tony, thank you. I have the head coach of the women's basketball pro program at Duquesne, Dan Durkin. And Dan, you have a player who's number one in scoring, number one in assists, number one in rebounds, and two in steals. And she's a freshman? Only a freshman. Uh, just turned 19, Corey Halede from Zagreb, Croatia. And how did Duquesne get someone for Croatia? Actually, it was pretty simple, Eddie. Uh, I was uh, doing a home visit 20 minutes up the road here. It only cost uh, Duquesne about $2.19 for this recruiting trip. 
And uh, as I was doing a home visit with this other young lady that we were recruiting, she had an exchange student living with her by the name of Ali Topich, and she happened to be 6'4". So I said to uh, this one, one young lady, Julie, who I was recruiting, I said, Julie, does Allie play basketball? And I said, yes. I said, you think she'd be interested in Duquesne? They go, yeah, I think so. So I talked to her after the home visit. Eventually, they both signed, and Allie said, look, before I go back home this summer, would you mind taking a look at my best friend on this videotape that I have? And I said, sure, no problem. I said, what is she? She said, she's a guard, but she's a pretty good guard. He says, she says, the only thing wrong here is that she's only 16 in this videotape, coach. I said, all right, I'll take a look. So I took a look about a week later, and lo and behold, it was a great 16-year-old who could shoot, drive, pass, do everything. And I said, if she's 16 and this good at 18, she must be tremendous. So I gave her a call up, and, and you know, as it happened, uh, she wound up here at Duquesne. She's adapting pretty good to the American style. How's, how is Duquesne doing this year? We're 5-8 and eight right now. We're 2-3 and three in the Atlantic 10, which is one of our better starts in recent years. And uh, a lot of that is a tribute to, you know, Corey and what, what she can do. She just makes everybody better on the floor. Uh, her, her goal is to win and not to score 40 points. I had to talk her into scoring 40 points one night. She thought if she scored 40 that everybody would hate her and, and uh, you know, would dislike her. I said, no, we need you to score 40. So she went out and scored 41 the next day and we lost. I, I, I messed that up. I should have said score 50. You got a tough game coming up. You have the Temple Owls here. Yeah, the Owls, uh, you know, as, as you know well from play, uh, covering the Big Five and everything like that, they always come in here and play us hard. And Charlene does a real good job. But um, we're really going to go after it because it would make us 3-3 three and three in the conference, which, again, is a great start for us. And we're really looking forward to it. The conference is tough. We saw GW, a nationally ranked team, go up to Rutgers and lose. I think it's really anybody's ball game. After GW, Rutgers had a slow start because of some injuries and um, because of Janelle Williams being out, but I think that they're back on target. So after that, I really think it's anybody's ball game, and, and that's the way we're looking at it. Dan, thanks. I always like to see a Philadelphia guy do well. I appreciate it, Eddie. Say hello to the family. Tony, Dan Durkin. All righty, thank you. At halftime here at the A.J. Palumbo Center and the number one rated University of Massachusetts in control over Duquesne. At the Discovery Channel, we go to extraordinary lengths to tell extraordinary stories. So if we see it, you see it. The Discovery Channel. Explore your world. In the geography of higher education, Massachusetts is the capital. And in Massachusetts, all paths leading to the best education, the best value, and the best location cross at Amherst. Atlantic 10 Conference, committed to enhancing the high ideals of scholarship and sportsmanship for over 2,000 student athletes. At the Discovery Channel, we go to extraordinary lengths to tell extraordinary stories. So if we see it, you see it. The Discovery Channel, explore your world. I still enjoy going to work in the morning. Nothing like that feeling. It's worth every morning in my own business. Own business. I enjoy it. I feel strong. It's a great feeling. When it's your business, you put your heart and soul into every decision. I basically dictate my fate. The confidence, the flexibility that you have. So consider this one. The corporate card from American Express. It's me. That's a sign of success. The card that helps you manage smarter. Call now and we'll take your application right over the phone. Now, small businesses save 3% on mobile gasoline. That's a plus. And get discounts on car rentals, hotels, and UPS overnight shipping. Accident disability insurance at no extra cost. And detailed monthly and Quarterly quarterly reports. reports to maintain control. Rewards are wonderful. See how the corporate card gives you what it gives over a million small businesses, the freedom to do what you do best. It's easy to apply for the corporate card. Call 1-800-SUCCESS. The best card to have. You'll soon remember why you started your own business in the first place. You obviously have to love what you're doing.
Halftime, 52-26. It is UMass on top of Duquesne. Talking to John Carroll coming into tonight's game. He said he knew what was needed in an attempt to stop UMass from trying to dominate this game inside. Obviously, if we don't trap very well and we don't rotate very well, there's going to be uh, maybe a record number of dunks here in the Palumbo Center. But uh, hopefully we can do what we have to do and do it enough times to keep us in the ballgame. John Carroll was worried about those dunks, and you can see why he was worried. There's Marcus Camby inside, off of a turnover. Another slam. This time it was Travieso, but that wasn't it. Again, Marcus Camby, strong move to the basket, and Marcus Camby with 19 points to lead all scores. The shooting UMass, when you get them that close in, you're going to shoot great numbers, and that's 63%. Exactly. So close to the basket. Don't even worry. They've only shot four three-pointers. They don't need it. Inside, UMass usually out-rebounds you. 18-13. Duquesne did a good job early in the contest, but UMass got on the glass late. Turnovers, the Dukes 14 because they can't break that press. And the front court scoring dominating by UMass. Second half action is coming up 52 26 at the break. Mass on top. If you think you play like this, but you really play like this, you need help. You need Leslie Nielsen, star of the new home video, Bad Golf Made Easier. Billy, the reason the game is called golf is because all the other four letter words have been taken. Leslie Nielsen's Bad Golf Made Easier teaches you the fundamentals. Always remember, the only really useful tip in golf is the one you give to the starter. Secrets the pros won't tell. Never use the comb in the blue fluid. And how to play the problem lie. It's the smash hit home video. Call now to order. Leslie Nielsen's Bad Golf Made Easier. What is our credo? We don't play golf to feel bad. We, we play, play bad, bad golf but feel good. good. Call now to order Leslie Nielsen's Bad Golf Made Easier. Only $19.98. This video makes the perfect gift. Rush delivery available. Call 1-800-529-9900. Hey, MCI customers. Now MCI advertises 40% savings with friends and family too basic, but the average savings on your MCI bill is only 13%. Must be MCI math again. Look at your bill. To get any discount at all, people you call have to be in your circle. And to get the big savings, they also have to be MCI customers. You even have to pay $36 a year in fees, so you never get 40% off your total bill. Now, some true math from AT&T. 20% is what we offer, and 20% is what we subtract off your AT&T bill. That's AT&T True USA Savings. Spend $25 a month on AT&T Long Distance and save 20% on your AT&T calls to everyone in the USA anytime, guaranteed. Four out of five friends and family two basic customers will save more with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Switching's free. Call now. Your true voice. Wow, it is roomy inside. This must be the cab's forward design I read about. How's it handle? Well, to demonstrate, I'll only be driving this Eagle Vision from the back seat. Hit it, Lynn. This Eagle Vision has everything. Uh, take a left here, Lynn. Okay. It's got a cool CD player, dual airbags. Take a, a right here. It's even got these cooling and heating vents in the back. Left here. It handles just like a sports coupe, right? Right? No, no, left. Left! Lynn? Now get up to $1,100 off select Eagle Visions. Tonight's Atlantic 10 game is being brought to you by Gillette. The new Gillette Sensor Excel with microfins that set up your beard for the world's best shade. By Just For Men Gel for that hard-to-color gray in mustaches and beards. My MasterCard is more than a credit card, it's smart money. And by NYT Video Productions, the New York Times company. With Ed Stefanski, I'm Tony Caridi, ready to begin our second half of play from the A.J. Palumbo Center with Duquesne in possession of the ball and in possession of a 26-point deficit. 52-26, number one rated UMass on top. Well, if you're looking for a silver lining, it's nice to have a young ball club that John Carroll has because he can get on them at halftime, and hopefully they'll respond. If you have a senior club, they may say, hey, coach, we've heard this before. So 0-0 on the scoreboard, I'm sure, is what John Carroll said at halftime. Let's see how we can do against them. 
couple of freshmen and a sophomore on the floor right now in the starting five for Duquesne. There's Tarl who had six points in the opening half. Rebound down to Marcus Camby, his fourth of the game. Camby scored 19 points in the opening half. Travieso. Contact made and a foul call. It will go against Duquesne. That's against Nietzsche Tarl, and that will be the fourth personal against number four. Tarl has a tough assignment. If it's not Camby, it's Lou Rowe. He's trying to block out inside. Here's Camby. Inside Lou Rowe. And Rowe now with the 11 points, three of the Minutemen into double figures. Camby with the 19, Rowe has the 11, and Dana Dingle with 10. Cheap points off the ground, but I'm sure Lou Rowe will take whatever points you give him. Kenya Hunter finds Tarl inside. Tarl, who had 10 points in his last outing against George Washington, with eight. Again, they go inside to Lou Rowe. Well, it was Camby the first half. Now it's Lou Rowe getting him the ball inside. Here's the pressure that Duquesne had all kinds of problems. Can't pick the basketball up there. Inside, Price over Lou Rowe. That's a nice hook shot by Kevin Price, the freshman getting some meaningful minutes. A good bucket against the All-American Lou Rowe. One of the emerging stars in the Atlantic 10, Kevin Price. Off the turnover, this is Kenya Hunter. Carl is there, pinned to the backboard by Marcus Camby. Hunter down to Tarl. And another two. Carl gets his 10th point on the evening. We saw the block shot by Camby. In the Temple game on Saturday, Camby had set a career high, tied it with eight block shots. 56-32. UMass on top by 24 Travieso. Attempted pass is batted out of bounds. Travieso is their designated shooter. Not a good pass there. He's got to fake the basketball, power dribble one way or the other, and make a good bounce pass or a lot pass to the inside. Saw Tarl asked to come out of the game with a knee problem. He pointed to his leg as Terrell Bridges comes on the floor. Dana Dingle has come on for UMass. Mike Williams with a three-point shot. He now has seven in the game. Well, Duquesne did a good job matching up inside, but you can't take everything away, and Mike Williams makes him bury it. Hunter got off balance there. Lou Rowe takes it for the Minuteman, and now Mike Williams. 59-32, UMass. Can be. Well, he almost wore the basket out at the other end in the first half, and he slams down another one, and here's Bridges. Has his shot rejected by Camby. I hope the rims and the supports are strong enough on these baskets. They're taking a beating from Mr. Camby. Yeah, but that was a great, great opportunity there to see Marcus Camby at his best. Here he is dunking the basketball, and immediately on the same sequence, down the floor he goes, great ability to run the floor, pins Bridges' shot to the glass. Because, Tony, when he dunks it, Bridges is taking off because he knows he has the two to try to get down, but Camby is so quick at 6'11 to get back and block the shot. John Vonder signals the turnover, and UMass will take it back, leading 61-32. UMass's biggest win in league play this season was a 30-point victory over West Virginia in Springfield. Edgar Padilla, however, gives UMass a 32-point lead now with 16 minutes to play. Hunter, foul, charge that one to Mike Williams. That will be his second personal. Williams gets together now with Edgar Padilla. 
Tony, earlier in the season, we had UMass against West Virginia, and West Virginia got buried up there. And around the Atlantic 10, the talk would be, wow, we got to face UMass. And then UMass goes to the Bonnies, and they struggle going overtime. And Temple takes them right down the last second. A little hope for the Atlantic 10 people. And now this, and they're just destroying Duquesne on their home floor. You better be prepared to play UMass 40 minutes in every possession. You got to handle the basketball. One out of two for Kenya Hunter. We've got a timeout on the floor. Just inside, 16 minutes to play. UMass continues to cruise over the Dukes. When I got rid of my gray hair, I wanted a really natural look. So I didn't take any chances. I used the sure thing for a natural look called Just for Men. Simply apply Just for Men and in five minutes rinse. It's specially timed to blend away the gray. Bring back the look of your own natural color as it conditions your hair. With five minute Just for Men, this natural look is a sure thing. Five minute Just for Men, the sure thing for a natural look. Gillette introduces the next revolution in shaving closeness. Micro fins. And they're only on the new Sensor XL. These micro fins precede the blades. As Sensor XL's spring mounted blades adjust to your face, these soft, flexible fins gently stretch your skin so your beard stands up for the closest, most comfortable shave. Get closer than ever before. Get the new Gillette Sensor XL. What's the price of poor salesmanship? At Tweeter, we think it can be pretty costly. Let's say you're in the market for a new TV. Sure, Tweeter's got a terrific selection. Like this Panasonic 27-inch TV with stereo sound and universal remote control. Or this RCA 31-inch set, also with stereo sound and universal remote. But the difference is that at Tweeter, you'll talk with low-pressure salespeople who really listen to you. And they won't try to oversell you on a model with features you'll never use. So buy your next TV set at Tweeter, or pay the price. UMass leading Duquesne 64-33. We welcome you back to the A.J. Palumbo Center. This copyrighted telecast is produced by the authority of the Atlantic 10 Conference and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Atlantic 10 Conference is strictly prohibited. I don't think Duquesne will want to tape for this one. Scoring, there you go, the percentage, 71% in the second half because the traps are getting easy shots. Norville can't hold on. Kevin Price finds Kenya Hunter down the floor. Good look by Kevin Price. The football pass. Kenya Hunter gets a deuce. Padilla and Mike Williams make up the UMass backcourt. In case you're joining us late, Derek Kellogg out of the lineup tonight for the Minutemen because of a groin pull. Dingle, great job to keep it alive. The tenacious rebounder. And on the offensive glass, 25 offensive rebounds against Rhode Island in a the game. They just murder you. Every time a shot goes up, you've got to put a body on UMass. You can't worry about rebounding the ball and trying to break. First, you've got to get the basketball. And here comes my player, Jeff Meyer. The big 7-2 senior from Wisconsin makes his first appearance. That last foul call went against Terrell Bridges of Duquesne, his third personal. Jeff Meyer at 7'2". He's going to show Cal Perry why she gets some more meaningful minutes. He's getting some minutes because Weeks, Tyrone Weeks, is back in Amherst with the flu. Bro, on the baseline, Dingle keeps it alive, and finally Pipkins clears. Sixty-four thirty-five, inside of fifteen minutes to play. Duquesne in no hurry. They shouldn't be. They got to learn how to run their half-court set against a good team defensively here. They got to work like it's nothing, nothing. Price rejected by Lou Rowe. Emphatically. Now Curley. Fourth point of the night for Curley. Williams to Jeff Meyer. And 
the basket plus a foul. Thank you. I told you Jeff Myers would get in there. He's the recipient of a nice pass by Williams playing the point guard position because Derek Kellogg can't play this evening. The good move with the left hand. And Jeff Myers at seven foot two, the senior center. The good pass gets up, gets fouled from behind, but finishes it off the play. Matt Curley picked up that foul, his third personal. UMass will stay on the road following tonight's game. They will stay here in Pittsburgh, and then they will head to Morgantown. They've got a Friday night date at the WVU Coliseum against West Virginia. I'm sure Gail Catlett's watching this game, thinking what he's going to do with the Minutemen when he gets them. Terrell Bridges catches Dante Bright on his way up. That's his fourth personal foul. Upcoming games, take a look at it. On the scoreboard for tonight, George Washington at Rhode Island. Rutgers meets up against Temple. And West Virginia playing down in the Riley Center against St. Bonaventure. On Thursday, St. Joseph's against George Washington. That's going to be a that's a good an, ball game. An interesting indicator of what's to happen. St. Joe is playing better basketball because the three guys coming into the season who are going to be their stars are playing well now. Bernard Blunt, Carl and Worley, and Demetri Damani are having good ball games, and Reggie Towns in their center is not missing a shot. So they're playing better as we saw GW beat Duquesne on Sunday. So that should be a good matchup. Kevin Price continues to work hard. Nick Chital is there again. He scored six points here in the second half. 12 points in the game for Tarl, who averages three points on the season. John Carroll taking something out of this game. That would be a positive point. Tarl doing a good job being physical inside. Edgar Padilla, the sophomore, who's playing so much more confident and comfortable this season for the Minutemen. Puerto Rican native. Carl again able to work himself inside. And with this type of offense, the three men out front spreading out the UMass defense and trying a little bit of a weave there helps the inside guys because there's help defense. Kenya Hunter gets a nice two points, seven points on the evening. Off the turnover, Kenya Hunter able to convert. Now UMass will try to regather itself. They lead it 69-43. You notice Duquesne has not given up because John Carroll, his personality won't allow you to give up. Still playing extremely hard, gambling, trying to go for some steals. Padilla unable to hang on. Taking a look at the rest of the week in the Atlantic 10. As we said, Friday night, UMass plays at West Virginia. The Minutemen able to stay on the road during this trip because the second semester has not yet started at the University of Massachusetts. They're still in their winter break. And then Duquesne at uh, St. Joseph's, also coming up in the schedule, Temple in Rhode Island. And we'll be at that one coming up on Saturday afternoon in Kingston. Tom Pipkins muscles up that three. They tie it up between Tarl and Williams. and. UMass will have the ball. We've got an official timeout on the floor. 11.58 to play. UMass continues to cruise over the Dukes. When you read the New York Times, people think you like to read about international diplomacy and leading indicators. When in fact, a lot of our readers prefer to read about sports. I always wanted to be a sportscaster, but I just couldn't lose this New York accent. The New York Times. Read what you like. It's up, and it's good. I got busy signals for an hour last night trying to call you. Why are you playing hard to get? I called you ten times, Mom, and then I had to walk. When right now, call waiting is so easy to get. I spent an hour trying to reach you. And all I got was busy, busy, busy. Call now and get free connection. You'll pay just $2.58 per month in Massachusetts, and you may never miss another call. You got call waiting. Finally. Oh. 9X. 
Wait a minute. I have a few things I have to take care of. All right, of. stop at every one of these machines. We're going to be late for the game. Only the Bay Bank card with Express Link lets you move money instantly from your personal account to your expense account. Pay your credit card bill. You can even send money to your son at college and still make it to the game on time. And while you're here, why don't you get me let's some? Go, let's go. Let's go. Oh, thanks. I hope we don't run into another machine. The Bay Bank card with new Express Link. Call 1-800-BAY-FAST today. Hey, I know you. You're Bob uh, Lobel. Hey, how you doing? And, oh, no. and you're that guy from Bay Bank. Can I borrow your card? <laughs> Top-rated UMass on top, 69-43, to 43, just inside of 12 minutes to play. Welcome back inside the A.J. Palumbo Center. Tony Caridi along with Ed Stefanski, head coach John Carroll of Duquesne. New coming into tonight's game, the UMass provided all of the answers when it comes to winning. I, I think that uh, John has done a great job putting together what I think is uh, his best team so far. They're deep. Uh, they have answers at every position. Uh, and I think that he's doing a great job of not only um, winning games during the season, but preparing his team for what I consider the second season, which would be the NCAA tournament. And you can see the way he uses Norville and Weeks and Trevisio, the uh, guys of that nature. He's getting them quality minutes. So when they get to the NCAA tournament, if there's an injury or foul trouble, they'll be prepared to win at that particular time of the year. So I, I think they're a very resilient team with tremendous camaraderie. And you can see it, that they, they know how to win, and, and they are winning, obviously. And here tonight, they're on top as Padilla looks inside, and Marcus Camby scores his 23rd point of the night. Camby's career high is 32. That came in the NCAA tournament last season against Maryland. Against Joe Smith, the center for Maryland. I'm sure Camby was a little excited about playing against Smith. Kevin Price has it knocked away by Camby. Maryland beat UMass last season in the NCAAs. Camby missed that one. But earlier this season, the Minutemen were able to avenge that defeat, winning in Baltimore against the Terrapins. The only loss for the Minutemen at Kansas. And as John Carroll said, this team with injuries tonight, sickness and an injury, they haven't missed a beat. John knew it was going to be difficult tonight. He was hoping he could spread the floor out a little bit and get one-on-one -on -one situations. But the man-to-man -man defense and the help situation just wasn't the big. Saw Camby missed that dunk. He was eight for nine from the field in the first half. Here is Kevin Price working against Jeff Meyer, and Meyer takes it down. by Price on the Camby attempt. You see it a lot of nice things out of Kevin Price. He's been going up one on one against Lou Rowe. Now he had a nice block on Camby. They swung the basketball, tried to get in front of him, but he comes from the weak side, helps out, and a good block. Kevin Price, the freshman, showing some good signs for Duquesne. Great look inside. Dingle is hammered. The junior from the Bronx will have two shots as Tom Pipkins picks up his third personal foul. Here's Kevin Price, who just a few seconds ago blocked that shot of Marcus Camby. Price is 6'7", and finished up his high school career as the second all-time leading scorer in Western Pennsylvania history, second only to his teammate here at Duquesne, Tom Pipkins. Tom Pipkins, you're right, and Kevin Price leads the Duquesne Dukes in rebounds, and he also had 28 against West Virginia, so he can he shows he can score the basketball and rebound it. Dana Dingle makes a pair of foul shots, and that UMass lead now back to 30, midway through the second half. Hunter's shot partially rejected. Dingle takes it up the floor. Off the miss by Camby. Dingle fights for it. And now Travieso. Great move. Switched hands in the air. Saw the pressure from the left side. Brought it to his right hand. The basket and a foul. 
Travieso leaping off the ground. He's got great explosion. And look at the inside, up 30 points. And UMass is just killing him still on the boards trying. Travieso up high and gets the deuce. This young man, I lied. I saw this kid dunk in warm-ups at the Mullen Center. Our associate commissioner, Bob Stokesy, Lang 10, we almost died when this kid jammed in home. At 6-2, he can get up. 76-43, UMass. Minutemen came into this game with a 12-game winning streak, second longest in the nation. Connecticut has the longest at 15 games after their victory last night over Syracuse. You only have to go 40 miles to Stewart, Connecticut, and the number two team in the nation there. Number one is at Amherst, and the other one in Connecticut. 40 miles, but they don't play each other. Dana Dingo looking down low for Norville, throws it away. Dingle on the night with 12 points. You know, just to talk a little bit about the depth of this UMass team, Marcus Camby came in today to tonight's game needing six points to become the sixth current player on the team to have scored over 500 career points. And that'll give you an idea that they have weapons galore. <laughs> Patrol came over the back. Team foul number four against UMass as Dante Bright sets things up for the Minutemen. Dana Dingle will take a seat. Side control comes over the back end, commits the foul on Kevin Price. Half court set by Duquesne. Kevin Price doing a good job. hosting up, getting his body on Cottrell, catching the basketball. Cottrell has to foul. Two foul number five, and so two more for the Minutemen. Cottrell comes up with the steal. And on a reach in, Hunter pokes it out of bounds. How many times have we seen Duquesne have problems inbounding the basketball? Again, the art of faking the basketball has gone. You have to fake the ball, make the defender commit himself. Great look, Travieso for Cottrell. Doesn't Cottrell know he has to slam it home? What's this layup stuff? Travieso on a reach in there, stripped the ball clean. Now Padilla, Travieso in the backcourt. This is Cottrell again. Oh! Travieso, right place, right time. Carmelo has scored five points here in the second half, seven in the game. Seven forty-six to play, 80-43. The Minutemen on top of the Dukes as Marshall goes deep. John Calipari ready to go back to his bench. Nunez, Mike Williams, Jermaine all ready to come in for the Minutemen. Norville, nice drop step inside. Freshman from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Tony, do you think the team doesn't like Derek Kellogg? I mean, <laughs> they don't miss him right now, Derek Kellogg. He must be sitting there saying, I better get healthy quick. Carl ties it up inside. Timeout on the floor. Seven minutes and five seconds to play, and the Minutemen on their way to win number 14 in a row. Look, it's a gold card. Sure, no card on the planet is more useful, but it can't grant you inner peace. Well, I don't know. I mean, you could use it to go someplace where your only action would be one of non-action, which is pretty peaceful. And if you let Master Guest arrange your vacation, you'd save 20 to 40 percent, plus another 100 bucks if you book by April 30th. And saving money might be the path of true wisdom. So I guess a gold MasterCard could help you see the light. Just remember to wear your sunscreen. Gold MasterCard, it's more than a gold card, it's smart money. 
Look for your gold MasterCard application and apply. MCI friends and family customers, have you looked at your bill lately? I'm with MCI and I have nine calls on my bill and none of them are on my calling circle. I have 23 calls on my bill and three of them are in my calling circle. Why work hard to save? With AT&T True USA Savings, you can call anyone, anytime, anywhere in the U.S. and save. Just call 1-800-PICK-ATT today. AT&T is simple. You pick up the phone, you call who you want to, and you get your savings. Here's how True USA Savings works for you. Spend $25 a month and you'll save save 20% off your AT&T bill, guaranteed. I'm always over $25 a month, so that's great for me. I can plan on it. And True USA Savings gets even better. When you spend $75 a month, you'll save 30%, guaranteed. It's easy. Switch today. It's how much you spend is how you get your savings. That's probably the best way to go. Four out of five MCI friends and family basic users will save more with True USA Savings. Call today and switch for free. This is a plan that would bring me back to AT&T. Your true voice. Welcome back to the A.J. Palumbo Center. 82-43, our score. The University of Massachusetts continues to pour it on. A-plus mini markets and the Atlantic 10 salute tonight's A-plus student athletes of the game from Massachusetts. Marcus Camby, who earned a 3.2 grade point average last semester in the College of Arts and Sciences. And from Duquesne, Kevin Price, a liberal arts major with a 3.1 GPA, named to the Athletic Director's Honor Roll this past semester. Congratulations to Marcus Camby and Kevin Price on A-plus mini markets. Student athletes of the game. We saw Nixia Tarl score there. That's his 16th point of the night, and that's a career high for Tarl. Where they thought the offense was coming from didn't come for Duquesne. Tom Pipkins only five points and Kenya 107. As Jermaine scores, the popular guy at the Mullen Center, when they're blowing teams out, they get the senior in the contest. Jason Germain on the board, his first two of the night. So the only player on the UMass bench who has not scored but is dressed tonight is Kellogg, and that's because of the injury. Here's Price, he's still working hard. Norville with the rebound, and he'll take it all the way in. You wonder who's going to fill in the hole when Lou Rowe leaves after this season. You're taking a look right there at Enos Norman. You know, I hate to say they're going to miss Lou, but they got plenty of players there. You got a front line of Weeks, Norville, and Canby, three centers there, and then you have Dingle and uh, Dante Breiter back. Wow. They'll miss Lou, but they'll be okay without him. Norville, a freshman who prepped last season at Hargrave Military Academy. He was considered one of the top 65 players in the nation last season, and he has not disappointed. In fact, he's been the surprise for John Calipari among his freshman class. I'd have to say there is a dynasty going on at Amherst. They're controlling the 90s in the Atlantic 10 right now. Not only in the Atlantic 10, they are the fourth winningest program over the last four seasons in college basketball. Al Perry can coach, but he also, he and his staff, excellent recruiters. Mike James tried to poke it back to Curley, and the Minutemen will take it back. Rough night for John Carroll. on his way in, and this is Curley. Well, Norville always sees Marcus Candy be able to do that. He wants to put the ball on the floor, too. Now Mike James. Got it. Here's another young guy who's going to be a very productive player for the Dukes. An impossible task for a young team like Duquesne to come in the style that they play, and they cause a lot of turnovers for other teams, but not against the number one team in the nation. Nice steal by Marshall. He'll have a couple of shots come. Ball call against Travieso, number two. Tony, talk around the Atlantic 10. Is this, is this the best team to ever play in the Atlantic 10? Number one team in the nation. We've had another one in Temple, back with Tim Perry and Blackwell. Is this a better team? 
Well, obviously, from a depth standpoint, there's no question. It's not to, not to be compared because uh, those Temple teams use six and seven players. And we probably aren't going to be able to say yes one way or the other until the season is over. But uh, from a regular season standpoint, I would have to think that this is no question the most dominating team, having won three consecutive Atlantic 10 championships. Final score from the Riley Center tonight. St. Bonaventure knocks off West Virginia 77-66. Second Atlantic 10 win for the Bonnies. George Washington has defeated Rhode Island in the Keeney Gymnasium by 10. At the Providence Civic Center, I should say. So the Rams go down, and George Washington has another victory. James tried to hang on there and knocks it out of bounds. George Washington now takes sole possession of second place. They had it at 4-2. and two. Now they're 5-2. and two. They're looking tough. That's a team that's a little strange also. <laughs> Sometimes they don't play well. But they're getting it together, and Mike Jarvis always gets his team together going into the latter stages of the year. Dante Bright scored that last basket. That lead now at 40 points with 4 minutes and 40 seconds to play. Kevin Price lost control, and here's Jermaine to Travieso. Another score we'll probably get before we're off was the Rutgers at Temple. Rutgers has never won at McGonagall. So going against a Temple team at McGonagall will probably get that score. See Chris Walker, sophomore from Covington, Kentucky, replacing Niksha Tarl. Tarl with his career high, 16 points tonight. John Carroll gives a little pat, came, came into the game, three points, three rebounds. Charles has to say, hey, I was physical tonight. I can do it. I can bang with the best of them. And that'd be Marcus Camby and Lou Rowe. He should get some confidence out of this loss. Jeff Meyer keeps the rebound alive. And Curley is fouled by Cottrell. Second personal. Four minutes and 22 seconds remain. John uh, Carroll called Ted Cottrell over and said, I want the clock to run. <laughs> Get out of town with the victory. They play the same style if they're up 40 or if they're up five. UMass will come after you, play the hard man-to-man -man defense, and push it out on the break. They know no other style. They can't stop it. Venus Norville. Scored four points tonight, replacing Cottrell. Junior from Annapolis goes to the bench with a couple of points. Boy, Trevieso does pop up there, doesn't he? Oh. Skies for a guard. UMass came in the game scoring margin, 16 points over the opponent. They'll stretch that up a little bit. Number one in the Atlantic 10. Chris Walker touched it last, and UMass will have it. That's not fair when you have a kid who can shoot the ball that well who can explode. That's one reason he shoots the jumper so well. He gets great height when he leaves the floor. Nunez, Jermaine, Norville, Travieso, and Meyer. The five out there for the Minutemen as Big Jeff just one hands it. Yeah, did my man show you that Kareem Abdul Jabbar look alike? I'm telling you, we're going to have to play some minutes this man. Here we go. You think Cal Perry will listen to me? Uh, no, I, I, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Norville with another two. Talk about the freshman that we've seen here tonight, Kevin Price. No question, a sure lock for a, a freshman, all freshman team selection in the Atlantic. And what about Norville? Oh, yeah. Norville's on the floor. The, uh, no doubt about it. Travieso again with the rebound. Rigoberto Nunez missed it all that time. And this is Dablin Marshall. Kevin Price. This 
is the first time in Palumbo Center history that the nation's number one team has made an appearance as Meyer is hit. They have had some success in upsetting some rated teams. They defeated number eight rated Florida State back in 91 and beat a rated Xavier team here that same season. They had the right atmosphere, a sold out Palumbo. They were pumped up. But the way Duquesne has to play to be competitive just doesn't match up against UMass and all their weapons and their style of play of getting up and down the floor. They want you to track. Do you think my man player of the year, Jeff Meyer? Got the good touch right now. Trying to get him some minutes. We'll work on Cal Perry after the game. At this moment, he's doing nothing to hurt his chances. Two foul shots for Jeff Meyer. 95-48 UMass. Gillette introduces the next revolution in shaving closeness. Micro fins. And they're only on the new Sensor XL. These micro fins precede the blades. As Sensor XL's spring mounted blades adjust to your face, these soft, flexible fins gently stretch your skin so your beard stands up for the closest, most comfortable shave. Get closer than ever before. Get the new Gillette Sensor XL. I got busy signals for an hour last night trying to call you. Why are you playing hard to get? I called you ten times, Mom, and then I had to walk. When right now, call waiting is so easy to get. I spent an hour trying to reach you. And all I got was busy, busy, busy. Call now and get free connection. You'll pay just $2.58 per month in Massachusetts, and you may never miss another call. You got call waiting. Finally. <laughs> 9X. innocent enough until they start ganging up on you then you'll be glad you invested in the security of jeep grand cherokee with an optional v8 and full-time four-wheel drive four-wheel anti-lock brakes and a driver's airbag because when you're outnumbered millions to one you need all the help you can get now get great values on jeep grand cherokee laredo plus for a limited time get a ski rack at no extra charge see your participating dealer for details Well, Marcus did do some crushing here tonight. Campy on the bench right now for the Minutemen with a game-high 23 points as UMass leads at 95-48, and the sophomore using his free time to uh, sign a few autographs. Good kid working hard on the court. Now he's to go off and sign autographs for everyone. Had a great fall semester in the classroom, 3.2 GPA. Lock shots of three, 3.2 with a GPA. Jeff Meyer commits the foul against Kevin Price. They can add points to these scores on the floor. His GPA is the smartest student at UMass. You can see the crowd has begin, begun and has been filtering. Now UMass, in case you're joining us late, led this game by 26 points at halftime and have been building on that lead throughout the second half. 2.33 to play. The little guy, Marshall, got that rebound, and he was fouled on his way up. Marshall, the smallest man on the floor, gets inside on a foul shot, sneaks in there against Meyer at 7-2, and Cottrell at 6'9". You figure it out. It's all in your mental approach. Take a look at the little guy. You got a 7-2 guy in there. You got a 6-9 <laughs> Cottrell. And no way. Davlin knocks down the first free throw. Just He'll have another. Desire. One. Talk to Derek Kellogg before the game about that groin pull that he's suffering. And asked him if he will be able to play against West Virginia on Friday night. And he said, at this point, I'm not sure. Nunez looks for that cut there to Travieso. And the way they're playing uh, tonight, it doesn't look like it's really going to uh, matter. Chris Walker 
Makes the contact there with Cottrell. I think one thing the other coaches watching this game or watching the tape have to figure out, obviously, is you're going to have to have the more of the Temple style in order to try to beat UMass. And I don't even know if that will work, where you slow it down, try to use the 35-second clock, and possession of the basketball is key. You can't turn it over because a fast break starts, and Camby and Rowe can really run the floor. Jamar Jackson from outside. Minutemen have the advantage down the floor. Union. But you know what? It's fun trying to figure out how to beat this team. I remember when Temple had those great teams, you always thought, how do you beat John Chaney's matchup zone, or how do you defense them on the offensive end? And the same thing is now, as we talked about, the depth of UMass is part of the problem. And this 6'11 Camby can do just so much. He's so dominating inside. How do you beat him? Well, again, I think you have to slow it down. I think the, the less number of possessions that UMass gets, is the key and we talk about running a 35 second clock and you cannot let them get on the offensive boards which they show that they can rebound the ball in that offensive glass forget the fast breaking jackson three off the mark rebound Nunez and the former walk-on flying up the floor Catro on his way in is contacted by matt curley Our Gillette player of the game this evening is the super sophomore for the Minutemen, Marcus Camby. Tonight, 23 points, four rebounds, three block shots. And Camby had 21 of those 23 in the opening half as UMass took control of the game. I would isolate Padilla, send him into the locker room with the flu. He can't get Camby, these guys sick. Tyro Tyrone Weeks back at Amherst. He's got the flu. That flu bug just runs right through the All team. Y'all right. got it? One. The UMass lead at 47 points. This will be their biggest victory of the season. One, two, one. On the turnover. Minutemen with a chance to hit the sentry mark. 90 seconds to play. There's the final out of McGonagall Hall. 64-60 tonight. Another close game for the Temple Owls, and Rutgers is playing improved basketball. Bobby Wenzel has them going. That takes Temple to four and three. Rutgers goes to four and two. Excuse me, three and three. Rutgers 500 in the Atlantic 10. Here's Cottrell inside. Inside of one minute to play. UMass will win its 13th straight game. Kevin Price follows in the miss. Minutemen will advance their record to 14 and 1 overall and 6 and 0 in the conference. Duquesne will fall to 5 and 10 and 2 and 6 as Jermaine hits it. And that's great. The UMass player is up cheering on Jason Jermaine who plays hard every day in practice and the senior knocks down a three. And with that three pointer, it's a 100 point night for the Minutemen. Kevin Price again is there. Jermaine tries to catch up with it with 19 seconds to play. Final seconds now for UMass. On the end line, and the ball will stay with UMass. Four seconds to play. At the buzzer, Travieso. 
got it. As if they needed it. Another three for Carmelo Travieso, which gives him 11 points on the night. Our final score this evening from the A.J. Palumbo Center. It's number one rated UMass 103, Duquesne 53. We'll be back to the Palumbo Center with the final comment in just a moment. At the Discovery Channel, we go to extraordinary lengths to tell extraordinary stories. So if we see it, you see it. The Discovery Channel. Explore your world. Hold it. This isn't you. It's an older guy. Oh, that was before I got rid of my gray hair with Just For Men hair color. Come on. That's too natural to be hair coloring. Just For Men. Apply and in five minutes rinse. Gray is blended away for a totally natural look. Think it'll work for me? In five minutes. Just For Men. Looks too natural to be hair coloring. And now try Just For Men color gel for the hard to color hair of mustaches and beards. Brush in, rinse out. Just five minutes. Look, a MasterCard won't make you different or unique, okay? Actually, maybe it will. I mean, millions of people use MasterCard, but yours is made for you and you alone. So if someone steals it, instead of worrying about people running around pretending to be you, call right away and cancel it. Because, after all, there's only one you. What's more, even if somebody does manage to charge stuff to you, you won't pay a cent. And we may even be able to get you a new card the next day. But just for you. Now, how's that for a useful card? MasterCard, it's more than a credit card, it's smart money. At the Discovery Channel, we go to extraordinary lengths to tell extraordinary stories. So if we see it, you see it. The Discovery Channel. Explore your world. A big night for number one, the Minutemen of the University of Massachusetts knock off Duquesne by 50 points tonight. 103-53, the final score dominating effort uh, right from the start. A devastating performance, and I think the one man that Cal Perry will point to in that locker room would be Mike Williams. He had to go to the point guard position tonight with Derek Kellogg hurt. He averages 13 points a game. He gave up those points, only had seven, but he distributed the basketball. They beat the half-court trap and got good buckets for Canby. The other team, Duquesne, has to regroup. They're young. Harrell will do a good job and get them ready for the Hawks. Marcus Canby leads the way with 23 points tonight for top-rated UMass. Coming up on Saturday, our Atlantic 10 game of the week, the Temple Owls against the University of Rhode Island. Join us at noon.